News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Our number three of the program. Uh, and here we are. 800-288-WBAP. Okay. Salina police arrest a man seen on video stuffing liquor bottles into his pants. Down his pants. Now... This is too, you know what's funny? I don't know the denominations. I don't know what a dang milliliter is like. It's so, well, which size? 750 milliliter or a pint? or what? I don't know what any of that, I know what a pint is. I think, you know, it's like a handful of, a, you know, it's like a a flask size, right? But um, I, it, I think it's the full bottle size, which is like a 750 milliliter, like what you see at a bar. You know what I'm saying? He shoves two of those down his pants. That's and it depends on what he stole, but it's probably fifty to eighty bucks for the liquor, maybe a hundred bucks. I don't know. It depends on what he stole, right? It could be anything, but probably at least fifty dollars. And 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 this is what happens when your police force is freaking on it, and this is what happens when your police force and your county and Colin prosecute, and they don't play. Criminals will come in and they will test you, and they'll say, "Here's my guess. What happened here?" I don't know where this criminal's from, but it's a wild story. I'll tell you about in a sec what happened here. But my guess is, oh, it's Salina. They're not paying attention. They're not used to shoplifting. It's a lot of well-off people up there nowadays. And um, not everybody, but there's a lot of well-off people there. It's booming. And they're not used to criminals coming in and stealing. We can, we can act all nice, steal, and get out of there. Nobody will ever know. No. The clerk watches the guy in real time. He has a camera, you know, and, and the video was is on my Twitter feed. You can see it. it's it's wild. And the guy goes, he's walking around acting like he's interested and oh, this and that. And then he stuffs it in his pants here. Then he stuffs another one in his pants here. Then he comes up and pays for something. And that's when the guy at the counter texts his uh, owner or his manager, somebody stealing, call the cops. And then you see the, the description of the video while it's playing in real time. And he's stalling. I think it's him that did this, the, the the liquor store. And then he stalls and he stalls. He's making conversation with the guy. Oh, oh, oh. the guy said the thing. Oh, I totally got this guy. I, he, yeah, I got away with it. And then at the very end, you could see the guy tell him, hey, man, you stole those bottles. I want them back. And then he puts one back on the counter. And then he goes, hey, dude, you have another one here. And he gives him the other one. And then you see him walk out. And then he kind of hustles to his car. And because he stalled, because he texted his boss immediately, as the as you as the guy came up to the counter, he texted his boss, and here's the deal. Um, he texts his boss, and the guy the guy that comes up that with the stolen stuff shoved down his pants, he thinks, oh, he's texting his friend, right? The way life is now, people don't put the customer first. Not everybody, but and they're sitting there texting on their phone, so he's not texting about the cops. He's texting something else. No. So in the same time all that happens, the uh, owner or manager that he texted calls the cops and he stalls and stalls and stalls. By the time the guy gets towards his car, he gets in, he backs up in the parking lot and he doesn't even get to go forward. And the cop just flies in. Yes! Woohoo, baby! Woo! The, uh, hold on one second. Here, hold on, here we go. It is the uh, Salina Police, I believe. Hercules, Hercules. Let me try that again. I got misfired on that. I apologize. Here we go. Oh, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Hercules? Big score by my friends at uh, Salina. Oh, uh, you know, I think it was Salina Police. If it wasn't, it was Collin County uh, Sheriff's, but I think it was Salina Police. They come storming in. They jump out, and the guy, guess what he does? Puts it in park and, and runs away on foot. Isn't that funny? Over two liquor bottles. He must have some serious warrants out for his arrest. Wow, huh? And then you see the video following. It's you. It's it's like a show. You get the full action. It's like the cop show, right? Cops is filmed on location. Blah 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 blah. And then you see the guy running and running. He runs through a field, an open field. And the cop tackles him, takes him down. Take down. Woo! Score. Goal. <laughs> My questions for you at 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. How have you responded to a theft at your job, if you've ever been witness to something like this and handled it uh, or responded to it somehow, or maybe you're told not to? 
And tell us about the takedowns that you've seen. Maybe you don't work in retail, but you've seen takedowns in front of you. I've, I have two stories I'll tell you about in a sec. And how does your employer handle theft at your store if, if you work in that kind of a business, you know, retail or something? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. So what this says in Salina and this business we call the cops and the police say we take theft seriously. If this was Dallas, you know what happens in Dallas if you steal, what is it, under 750 bucks, which is a joke because of our woke DA, uh, uh, George Soros, let him go, Cruzo, who's gotten uh, hundreds of thousands over two elections to help get him elected in uh, Dallas County. He, uh, you're supposed to go online and fill out a form if, you're, if it's your store or if you're the employee that catches them stealing. You fill out a, a form online. Cops won't even show up unless it's like grand theft or something. I think we're above 100, 750 or I believe that special still stands. So um, not in Salina. This is not a problem. And that's why you'll have low crime there compared to Dallas County because they enforce the law. I saw two uh, takedowns. Um, I saw one and both of them were at the Walmart in the rough part of town that has now been shut down, turned into a Walmart like a distribution hub, no longer a retail store. It was right by where we used to live. And our, where we lived was very nice. The area was very nice, but it was r- close to a rougher area. And there were two takedowns in front of me over like a period of like a couple months or less. It was unbelievable. The first one was I had no idea what was going on. I was at the checkout of Walmart, and I hear I, I hear some commotion. I look over and I see a cop grabbing a shoplifter and picking him up off the ground. He's in uniform because they hire him in uniform. That's why you can tell it's a really tough area, right? A tougher area. He's in uniform. He p- grabs the guy, picks him up, and slams him down on that. You know, in the produce section, it's concrete. It's like polished concrete f- a floor. You know what I'm saying? There's no... It's just a concrete that's floor that's sealed and it's shiny because it's being polished weekly or whatever. He slams down on thing and that, it's just a body slap. Like, you know, when it's a body being slapped down on top of a concrete it's just like a slap i mean it's like oh man that person uh, was slammed to the ground and that cop cuffed him and stuffed him and took him out beautiful a month or two or three later same thing at a walmart same walmart i'm in the parking lot this is so ridiculous this is probably why they shut the place down and turn it into like a distribution hub where they do deliveries or whatever you know what i mean there's no more retail there um, that's probably why there was always a uniformed officer on duty there 24-7. It's right by some rough apartment complexes. Anyway, um, the second time I'm walking out to my car, and it's the same thing. The cop, hey, hey, and the guy starts to hustle, and the cop just runs, grabs him, and throws him on the ground and, and, uh, and arrests him. Two takedowns, one in the parking lot, one in the produce section, the same Walmart. It was a beautiful thing, and uh, cops are awesome. I'm grateful for them, for them being here and serving and protecting. So, um, what kind of theft have you seen going on at your employer? How does your employer tell you to handle it if you work in retail? And what kind of takedowns have you seen, whether you work at a retail place or whether you have witnessed it like I did? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. What a, what a difference it makes depending on where you're at. This is a real example of why people don't live in cities a lot anymore, but live near them. Because you will not get the effective enforcement. Now, I don't know what uh, Fort Worth policies are. I'm a big fan and a friend of the chief there, as you know, um, uh, Neil, um, Chief uh, Neil Noakes. But, and he's doing a great job. I don't know what his policies are, let alone the, or, or the city managers, I should say, or the city attorneys there. I'm going to guarantee you it ain't what it is in Dallas County. So criminals learn the hard way. Don't do it in Salina. Don't do it in Collin County, at least depending on where you're at. Don't do it there because they will prosecute and they will. The cops will show up and they will take you down. I tell you, that is the most effective way of stopping theft by enforcing the law. Coming up next. Remember how California has uh, increased minimum wage? You know what? Did you see that? The California increased minimum wage to twenty dollars an hour, at least for fast food. How is it affecting restaurants? One major chain that we've all heard of, they're here, and people went nuts when they finally came here, is only, according to the Daily Mail, as far as they're aware, only doing this expensive charge, if you will, a higher charge for the, for the food for, for certain meals. And how much more is it? It's pretty amazing. 
and it appears only in California. So this is the effect of when you want to pay more. Oh, I'll pay more for living wage, right? $20 an hour, $16 or $30 an hour, right? What cost does it come at? And are you willing to pay a lot more for a meal if it means that person can get a, quote, living wage, or if it means that person gets health insurance like some Dallas restaurants did and do. All that's coming up next in the Chris Crock Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, and now on FM at 93.3, our number is 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3, make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Uh, in and out Burger. I, I got to be honest with you. I agree with somebody who chimed in on this story that uh, it is totally overrated. I went once. I was excited. I'd never been to when it was here, like in that first six months or so, way back when. Totally unimpressed. Period. No thanks. I mean, I mean, it's fine. Well, Whataburger is better, says producer Thomas, but that's not the case when it when it takes 30 minutes to make something. It's just not worth it to me. I, 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 the only way I would order Whataburger is if I ordered it and came by like an hour later to get it when it was finally ready. It's a disgrace. It really is. What, what's the point of it being, oh, it's fresh? Yeah, but I wait an hour for it. That's not fast food. It's, might as well go to a restaurant. Honestly, you'd probably go quicker if you want to take Can I do a takeout? They, they would probably make it for you in 10 minutes. And it would be probably just as good. So I do hard pass on that. What a what a wait. What a I would call them what a wait. That's my experience. It's my personal experience, and I'm sticking to it, and I always will. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Now, uh, what a burger. Excuse me. Uh, in and Out Burgers in the state of California are now going to cost you. Hey, it it uh, now going to cost you four dollars more for the same uh, burger because they've raised their minimum wage to twenty dollars per hour. We've been seeing the effects in the news here, there, everywhere. You know, in in California, I've seen stuff about you know restaurants shutting down twenty of their stores, or they're letting go a lot of employees, or they're uh, a lot of people are getting let go or turned into part time, and they're barely even working because of this. The double double with fries is famous. It's typically more than ten bucks in the two hundred and seventy five restaurants in California, but now. Um, and the owner, one of the VPs in a meeting said, typically burgers go up about 20 cent, 25 cents. A drink goes up five cents. So 30 cents. Not anymore. After California raised the $20 and to this $20 an hour minimum wage, it is now a lot more. That $10 uh, burger is now $4 more in California than it is anywhere else. And then, in fact, the double double, which is typically, it's now typically ten forty five for a double double, eight sixty five for a cheeseburger, and eight fifteen for a hamburger, according to the Orange County Register. What do you think? Eight dollars and fifteen cents for a hamburger, ten forty five for a double double, and eight eight sixty five for a cheeseburger. Okay. And then you add nine and a half percent sales tax from LA County. It's up to eleven dollars and forty four cents for a double double. And um, that is not the case. According to the Daily Mail, they do believe that uh, this is only in California, these prices that have been jacked up four bucks per per uh, for deal, per uh, double-double. Uh, even so, it's worse at Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, they said. The double-double there is $13.63. Uh, uh, KRON Channel 4 said in San Fran, a spokesperson for In-N-Out tell, told the, that channel the price hikes were directly related to the new $20, $20 an hour minimum wage. Way to go, California! <laughs> so here's my question. Do you mind paying $4 more for a burger in order to uh, for the servers and staff to make a, quote, living wage? Is that okay with you? Do you mind paying four dollars more for a burger in order to for the servers and staff to make a quote living wage? Some people say they don't mind. I do. 800 288 WBAP is our number, 800 288 9227 Um, a Dallas area restaurant group 
two restaurants. It is a twofer right by each other. Apparently, there's Rye, an American small plates restaurant, and next door, it's Sibling Apothecary. A craft cocktail bar. I hate that. That's a craft. Put the word craft on and charge a double for the same thing. There's not such thing as a craft cocktail bar. They serve, it's a bar. That's all it is. Craft. It's craft, handcrafted. Get out of here. Flush that down the toilet. Uh, they're now tacking on a $3 surcharge. Business Insider wrote a story about this. We talked about it when that happened. For uh, onto diners' tables to fund uh, health care. And health insurance, I should say, and uh, time off for the staff. And some people said, I don't mind that. I do. So here's my questions for you. Do you mind paying four bucks more for a burger in order for the service and staff to make a living wage? And do you mind paying more for uh, people that, are, that wait on you to have health care coverage and or time off, pay time off? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Do you support paying extra? to get people more wages and or health care. I love how they mention Obamacare and this health care thing in Dallas. It's an offset of costs uh, because of uh, all the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. Wait a minute. Obama said it'd be free. Hey, we'll be clear. Hey. Yeah, everything about that whole thing is a lie. So um, the initial response in Dallas to these two restaurants that said we're going to put on a 3% sur- surcharge for insurance and time off... The hospitality uh, group said it was completely positive at first. It shifted after it appeared in the Dallas Morning News. Numerous reviewers have been leaving one-star, two-star ratings on Google and Yelp. I love this. I'm saying this with a, a, file, a smile on my face and having fun with this. A Yelp, um, on Google and Yelp, they're leaving one-star, two-stars, accusing the team of being deceptive about the charge, referring to restaurant staff as servants. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's that's that, that's what you have right there. I ain't paying anything for what it is. If you don't like the job or the pay, they don't go there. And for me, I will never uh, shop at a place that does that. They can do what they want, by the way. I'm not against companies charging what they want, but I'm not going to pay for it. Uh, same thing with Whataburger. Look at this. Do you support uh, paying people 20 bucks an hour uh, if it means you spending $4 more for the same cheeseburger? Not me. Not me. How about you? Three lines open, 800-288-WBAP. So, um, it's amazing, isn't it, to see this? All right, is she coming up next? All right, Miss, Mo- Miss Monique, uh, one, of our, one of my most favorite callers. She doesn't call nearly as much as she should, but she's one of the best. She's coming up next on the Chris Crock Show on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 933. Plus, your call do you mind paying four bucks more for a burger in order for the servers and staff to make a, quote, living wage, quote unquote, which there's no such thing as that. It's just a thing made up by the left folks. And then also, are you OK with uh, paying more for health care and time off, pay time off for restaurant employ- uh, workers? Hard pass on both from me. 800-288-WBAP. Also coming up next at 1030 is promised. Flight attendants give us warnings about drinking passengers and a passenger who switched seats to allow a fellow traveler's son to have the window spot has tremendous regrets. I'll tell you why next. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-9227. That's 800-288-9227. In just a few, we will talk about a flight attendant who issues a stark warning to passengers who drink at the airport before boarding, and then also planer who sw- plane passenger who switch seats to allow a fellow traveler's son to have the window spot gets serious case of regrets, and I'll tell you why. Some good stories to uh, talk about. There's some interesting stuff. In the meantime, we are talking about the uh, chain, the burger chain, who is here, but all over the country, at least in a lot of places, in and out Burger in California announces that because of Gavin Newsom and the Democrats of California, minimum wage of $20 an hour, these poor fools, they're destroying people's lives and businesses and owners, chasing businesses out of the state. What a, uh, excuse me, uh, in and out Burger has now is now charging $4 per burger more than they do out of state people. Uh, you know, if you're out of, in your out-of-state location. So, Texas, they're not charging the same price. It's just in California. So, do you mind paying $4 per burger more 
for the double double than you would if it means paying a quote living wage which there is no such thing as that that's a a term used by the left just like the school the prison pipeline which is bs it's called discipline and um do you mind paying more for uh, to give people health care as some restaurants in dallas have done uh, or for them to have a week's paid off, a uh, week's vacation paid off. Not me. I ain't, I ain't for any of that stuff. If you don't like it, don't work there. It's no big deal. My, my wife worked in restaurants for years. I'm talking not like two or three, but years. Particularly in the early years of my career, uh, she made more. She kind of boasted about that than I did. And uh, fortunately, that flipped at a certain point, and it's never been back the you know that way which is nice uh monique and fourth you've called in at 800-288-wbap 800-288-9227 hello a long time no talk hey friend how are you great friend how are you i'm just peachy just getting out of work Excellent. so yes i do mind because it's a fault of your own actions as to why you feel like you need more money. Okay, so listen, I got a friend who works at GM in Arlington. Yes. Okay, they just had a big strike. Yes. And their pay went up a lot. Yes. Now, they was already paid good. Yes. But they they pay went up, like, really good this time. Right. So my friend was telling me, and in four years, we're going to be back striking because we need more. I'm like, why strike, though? Why why do you need more? You make damn good money where you at right now. The reason why you feel like you don't make money, because the way you vote, Make sure taxes and everything else that much more higher to where you feel like you have to come and bank damn near bankrupt your company yes. because you feel like you're not making enough. And it's all because of how you vote. If you change the way you vote, you won't need to keep asking your company for raises. You won't need to have to move from California to Texas because that's what your company did because they couldn't afford it in California. You know what else, Miss Monique, is uh, it, it's like a gentle form of extortion, isn't it? We're going to strike. If um, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, we're going to we're going to destroy your business if you don't give us what we want. When you when you talk to these people, they don't understand that. Like you work at General, you work at one of the places in, in DFW that got the best pay. I mean, the best pay and the best benefits. What more could you ask for? I think the company was doing too damn much when they gave them what they gave them. I agree. And they, uh, they was. Go well, ahead. No, you go ahead. They were making good money, damn good money. And now you're going to feel like you at twenty something dollars an hour, you were doing good. I mean, and now at 30 plus something an hour, you're doing great. And you 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 telling these people that you're going to be back in four years because they they, they strike. They uh, contract comes up every four years. You'll be back in four more years asking for more because you just know things going to be more expensive by then. But what I'm telling you is that if you just vote differently, everything would be that much more cheaper for you. You know how rich you could be? You know how much money you could save up making $35 an hour and taxes are low, prices are low, gas is low? Imagine what you can save and put up. You know what else? Amen to that. But you know what else, uh, Monique, is they're destroying the company. They're bankrupting the company eventually. If you and plus, if you look at, I know you are a, a big follower of all the news going on in our country and the world. And if if you look at the uh, attempts to unionize in plants for uh, either Nissan or Toyota and some mm-hmm. other ones in America, the votes are no, and they try to shake down, harass, uh, pressure, and the people they vote for it no because like I don't want this crap. I don't need the union. I heard, heard Mercedes Benz had just done that recently. What unionized or rejected a? Uh, a I, I, th- yeah. I think they rejected it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I didn't catch that one, but absolutely, the people are given a choice. And when they choose it and they're educated on it, they go, I don't want this crap. I don't want to pay dues to a membership, that, dues that to a group that will literally vote for my against my interests in this country and destroy it with Joe Biden, a frozen um, husk, uh, a zombie. Did you see him yesterday at the 
Um, Juneteenth celebration. Did you see that where everybody's dancing? You, you know I did, and you know I thought it was a mess. And at this point, I don't. I'm not understanding why they keep him up there. He's a I frozen mean, I zombie. Love it. I love it because it would be yes. perfect for us to go against. Yes. Him. But like at this point, it's they need to call APS Adult Protective Services on them folks. Ah, I'll tell you why uh, they're not going to get rid of him. And even though they want to, and they're openly doing it, you got pollsters that are uh, very. Democrat friendly like Nate Silver from five whatever is it five thirty eighth or whatever it is polling thing mm-hmm. and he literally said if they can swip them out now they can do it but this is these numbers are horrible and he said he still might be able to eke it out but no they're not going to leave because he does not want to leave this is for him this is his ego he's already got it he ain't going to leave this this is everything to him right right yeah. I, I feel I feel like that. Um that if they were to try something like that, it it would go nowhere. But listen, the demo. I hate to think like this, but I mean, they give me no other choice. Like, there is no way Democrats win elections legitimately. I just refuse to believe that half of America is that damn dumb. I just refuse to believe it. Well, it works if, you, if they don't see it and they trust the mainstream media. It sure does work then. A lot of people are disinterested and don't follow this and they make up their minds in those last couple of months. And if they don't get the right facts, then here we are. But I think it's just so, as you said, it's so bad now that it's just, it's ridiculous. And, and the question of, Miss Monique, are you better off now than you were four years ago is hitting them in the head. Every It's, it's clear, so... There's I appreciate. No way you can, there's no way you can answer that honestly and say yes. I'm of course, better off now of course than I was not. Years ago. Unless you hate Donald Trump and then you can lie and pretend that that's uh, accurate, right? And uh, that's exactly what's happening. But it was nice speaking to you. I, hugs to my a- hugs to my friend, my dear friend, Miss Monique. I appreciate you. Drive home safe. All right. Thank Take you. care, friend. All right, there she goes. Uh, the great Miss Monique. Always love her calls. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Also... Coming up next on the Chris Croc Show, I'm going to get into this. Flight attendant issues a stark warning to plane passengers who drink at the airport. And uh, I'm going to share that with you, along with plane passengers who switch seats to allow fellow Trevor's son to have the window spot left horrified after this happens. All that's next. And I'm asking you this, so you can call in right now. Uh, flight attendants... What are some of the things where flight attendants have uh, messed up? Your worst dealings with flight attendants and drunk passengers. And what are the grossest things you've seen on a flight? We're going to do both of those coming up next on the Chris Croc Show, 800-288-WBAP. I've got a bad story about a flight attendant on my trip that I just did last week that I will share with you. And then all that's next on the Chris Croc Show, 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Flight attendants. Promises made, promises kept. What are your worst dealings with flight attendants? And then how about drunk passengers? What have you seen go down with uh, drunk passengers? And what's the grossest thing you've seen on a flight? We're going to get into all three of those right now. But our number for you to chime in at right now is 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Here we go. Flight attendant issues stark warning to plane passengers who drink at the airport before boarding. I can't believe anybody needs to tell you any of this. And by the way, you're stupid if you don't do, if you don't, uh, if you do this stuff. Honestly, you, you just, I don't understand anybody who would drink before they get on a flight. You're, you're, you become more dehydrated. It affects you more profoundly up in the air, apparently. I don't know. Uh, I think in my whole lifetime I've had one drink up in the air. I it's ridiculous. It doesn't it's 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 uh, it's stupid. And then if you drink a few and you have an issue, you're gonna get tossed off that plane as you should be. Here's what this woman said, this flight attendant. This is a PSA to everybody who likes to drink at the airport. Please just don't make it noticeable when you get on the plane. I don't wanna kick you off. You don't want to be embarrassed. Please just don't make it noticeable. I mean, what is that? You know, drink. Go drink as much as you want. Just don't make it noticeable. That's stupid advice. The advice should be like, don't drink if you're going on a plane because if you have any issues, you're going to get thrown off. Please just don't make it noticeable. Again, that's the most stupidest thing I've heard. It's a win-win for both of us, she says. Don't make it obvious. Don't be stupid if you can't handle your alcohol. Like, quote, figure it out. Like, I love that. Don't get drunk because we're legally required to kick you off the airplane if you appear to be intoxicated. (laughs) Really? No kidding. It's not me. Just like being a buzzkill, okay? 
this 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 woman's got her head up her rump as far as I'm concerned. It's okay to drink. Just don't let me know. I'm not trying to be a buzzkill. Like, what is this? She must lead a wild life to talk like that. You know what I'm saying? How about even if you drink, you don't drink. I don't care. How about don't drink when you get on the plane? You don't want to deal with it. It's bad. And if we think you're drunk, we're going to be thrown off. So this is like saying, you know, it's okay to get pregnant, but just get don't get fully pregnant. It's okay to, you know, it's like uh, horseshoes and hand grenades, they say, right? I'm kind of pregnant. I'm kind of uh, whatever. No. Here's this one woman. Imagine how drunk you have to be. Some of the comments on the story from the Daily Mail. Imagine how drunk you have to be that they're like, you're too drunk to sit in a seat. Another one says, I'm literally bringing, uh, I literally bring my cup to go filled with wine from the lounge on board. Lol. Ma'am, you have a problem. Ma'am, you're a fool. Another one says at 5.30 a.m., this is insane, ready for this? At 5.30 a.m., they had to carry a drunk lady off the plane the other day while I was waiting for my flight. Big yikes. Can you imagine being on a plane with a raging drunk at 5.30 in the morning? She's either a full-blown alcoholic or she uh, was a fool who drank way too much because she was maybe, maybe she was delayed. Some people on this are commenting, oh, I was delayed. So what? I was delayed. I, I told you my story. I went through hell last week when I was in New York in one day because I, 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 would, I wouldn't normally freak out, but I had a show to get to Thursday night, and they screwed me. They really did. I had to help a woman, uh, another one says, I had to help a woman get on her flight once. She was hammered at the bar. She made the flight. I would not, I would, literally, if somebody was drunk, I would not be helping them. Say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I wouldn't be involved in any of that stuff. You might get thrown off with them. I'm not going to help anybody this drunk. Ma'am, if you need some help, I'd go to the people here. That's what I would say. That's it. Remember, you cannot reason with a drunk. You cannot reason with a drunk. It, they're, they're, they're fools. Period. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Here's another piece of advice. Be careful, be wary of who you give up your seat to. Plain passenger who had switched seats to allow a fellow traveler's son to have the window spot is left horrified as he goes, after he goes, all caps, barefoot the entire flight. Uh, details on this in a sec, but again, I'm asking that question. You can chime in right now. Uh, flight attendants, promises made, promises kept. What are your worst dealings with flight attendants? I'll share your mind in a sec. And what about drunk passengers? What have you seen? And what are the grossest things you've seen on a flight? Any one of those. 800-288-WBAP. Unmanned uh, recently took to Reddit to share this, uh, how he was outraged. I get the middle seat in the middle aisle. The dad crosses, uh, does this flight. Hold on a second. He says, yep, he, he, uh, the guy came and said, hey, would you mind switching seats and go to the middle with my son so we can have the window seat? He did. And this guy who's a, clearly a grown adult with big, massive feet and hairy legs took his shoes and socks off next to him and both of his big, massive, disgusting feet, uh, un- unsheathed feet were uh, next to him. And he could, he took a picture of it right there on his left, like just right next to where his, where his left foot would be. Dude, all you got to do is say, sir, could you please cover that all up and put some shoes on, please? If you wouldn't, then just hit the bell and talk to the flight attendant. In that case, since he's right next to you, I'd go over and walk over. Say, you know what? Two things. He, he's, uh, I asked him to put his shoes on. He won't. And it's disgusting to me. I, there's a, that's a health violation. They would immediately say, sir, you have to put them on. Otherwise, you're gonna, there, there's going to be an issue here with us. Because that's a health code thing. Uh, I'm sure of it. So you can just make it that way. The flight attendant would. Not me. I'm not Sheriff Bob. Flight attendant is. I always go to the flight attendant. I ask first nicely if there's any issues. Then you go to the flight attendant. Thankfully, I've not had to go beyond that because people do usually take care of you uh, and people are usually kind. If they're not, then you got to go to the flight attendant. Um, okay, I promised to get to this yesterday and thankfully I have time for this. Worst boss in Capitol Hill. Staffers describe her as manic representative who threw furniture over a toxic uh, in her toxic office. Uh, the Ukrainian uh, American representative, Republican, by the way, Victoria Spars, it's irrelevant. Abusing is abusing. She, uh, her former staffers have made explosive claims she was manic and abusive and would throw furniture at AIDS. Worst boss in Capitol Hill is what they say to the Daily Mail. She had one source throws, says she has thrown shoes at her district staff, blew up at them at the front of, uh, front, in front of constituents at multiple occasions. And uh, she's manic, verbally abrasive, if not borderline abusive, said one former staff member. 
I'm glad they show this. They tell this. I can't stand this for people, and I'm glad they're, they're getting this out there. Her interactions with senior staff with much more civil than they were at the lower level staff. They don't make a lot of money. To treat them like that was wholly uncalled for and inappropriate, um, they say, this person in this editorial. Wowie, wowie, wowie. Ma'am, um, I'm glad this is out there. One source of direct knowledge question why the uh, there's a committee that can investigate this. They got a complaint against her before a primary, but they chose to wait until after the primary to get in contact with it. Well, I'm sure the, the staff, they, you got to probably they're like, hey, this could be electioneering. It's a, it could be a fake thing. We're going to hold off. That's just how they do it with that. Um, I'm sure. And I would support that 110 percent. She's been long critical to, uh, that many in Washington want power, pay and privilege. When the system is held to account, we get anonymous rumors and exaggerated stories. Somebody said. Anyways, I don't know. I believe it. There's a lot of crazies out there. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Coming up next on the Chris Croc Show, Hunter Biden. This is breaking news. He's still guilty. Uh, he's still he's uh, still found guilty, and he still is. Right, let me check again. He is still guilty. Yes. Okay, we're going to get into that big time coming up next on the Chris Croc Show. On News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3.